What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my football manager save. This is episode number 61. And still returning with two big games with our cherries. I'd say Spurs at home in our Carabao Cup quarter final and then Manchester United also at home in a big game in the Premier League. Before we get to the games though, shall we be getting on off camera? And of course, in the last episode, you saw our undefeated streak ended and ended badly. 1-0 loss at home to Liverpool, 1-1 draw in Madrid against Atletico, and then a 4-2 loss away at the Etihad Stadium. Sadly, we didn't bounce back instantly with a goal to against Aston Villa, but frankly, we did win our last three. Scraped through the first two, though. First beating Nottingham Forest by a goal to nil. Sucic with the only goal of the game round, the goalkeeper propping it home. Played better, but not dominant. And then the following game, we were really lucky. Went away to Belgium, took on KRC Gang. Jordan Henderson scored his first goal for the club and what will probably end up being his only goal for the club is retiring coming to the end of the year and KRC Genk had a disallowed goal in the second half so we were really poor in that one and just about got away with it but our final game was to be fair our first dominant victory in a while 5-2 win against Southampton defensively pretty shaky scored a goal at either side of the game through Kalei I here and Nacho but in between that Alex Scott bagged a hat trick you heard me right. Alex Scott bagged a hat trick. Guys turned into a goal scorer this year. You'd love to see it. And uh, there were two late goals for Lautaro Soria off the bench as well. And a 5 to victory. His first goal, too. What a lovely dink by Kazada. And uh, his fit after, sorry, in his second was uh, getting on the end of a, uh, a Radulovic ball over the top. So, yeah, three wins in a row. But honestly, man. Take this to a pinch of salt. We're still we're still looking really unconvincing out there. And we haven't been since that 4-1 victory away at the King Power. So in the Premier League right now, as you can see, we're in the top six. We are in sixth place. That is what would do me fine come the end of the season. But we have quite a poor goal difference record compared to the teams above us right now. We play the game more than a few teams around us as well. So Take it with a pinch of salt right now. We're still not performing as well as I feel we need to to have any chance of being in the top four place. If we finish sixth again, a joint record high, I'd take it. But we want to start taking steps forward. If we're going to do that, we've got to be the big teams, like today. But I will be honest here, I won't be too disappointed if we lose our first game today. At home, Tottenham Hotspur, Carabao Cup, quarterfinal. And, you know, we are the holders, which is which is nice, you know. But uh, to be honest, like, you know, we, we've won this tour the past three years. I... I, feel, I think we've won it enough. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, You're not desperate to win the Carabao Cup eight times in ten years, are you? But right now in the injury report, as you can see, uh, David Garz just went down with a broken ankle. Won't see him again until around March time. That's a big blow there for Garz uh, the Great. That's a real shame for the young Mexican. Uh, the Chump also went down with ligament damage as well. We've had quite a lot of injuries this year as Baterina and Mascara are also recovering as well. Everyone else is fine. But yeah, this season we have quite had, uh, quite a few injuries here. But anyway, heading into the first game, uh, we do have our four 4-3-3, three, three, low block, low defensive line, a uh, mid block, low defensive line um, tactical setup here where we don't press at all and we just say to the opposition, come break us down, come break us down because whenever I play a high line and a high press against one of the big teams, I always seem to get carved open. So with that in mind, we're going to keep it tight. We're going to stay very defensive indeed. I'm going to change the mentality to, block, uh, to balance as well and uh, just say to Spurs, break us down. Break us down. I trust Georgie from range. So this is our team. Georgie in goal. Back four is Mitchell, Miodrag, Gomez and Arrows. And the midfield trio is Radilovic and McTominay sitting deeper with Scott further forward. Traore and Soria are on the wings. And Enrico Araujo will be our pressing forward up top. On the bench you've got Ward, Henderson, Smallcomb, Lopez, Forsby, Suchis, Delight, Watkins and Garan Kawhal as well. Tactical change for the game, but what can I say? When I take on a big six team, I've got to know where we are right now. And that is always the underdog. Come on, you Jerry's. Wow. Poor first half, this really poor. You know, I know we put five past Southampton, but only scraped one nil victories against KRC Genk and not in the Forest. I'll be honest here, we we haven't we haven't been great recently. You know, and and we could really do with a big win somewhere to get ourselves feeling good. Because that Southampton game didn't feel like a big win. We expected to win. We still shipped two goals. We we need like a big big feel good victory to kickstart a run of form. At the moment, it's just not coming. Still 0-0, no, 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 nine minutes after the restart. And Spurs haven't done much yet. The defensive line staying low is helping, but it's only a matter of time before they do get a good chance. There it is, and it results in a goal. Cross to the middle by our former fullback, James Madison with a header. Spurs in front. Done well to keep him out the one time they come in, they get the goal. And now we're gonna have to come out of shells, aren't we? Now we're gonna have to come out of shells to get some chances. Fuck's sake. 
Uh, let's change to our Geek and Press system. Let's change to our Geek and Press. I, I feel as though, like, whenever I take on a big team, I just think, oh, we're going to get battered, you know? We're going to get absolutely battered. I just don't have the confidence. Let's go 4 2 3 1. And, um,. Let's let's bring on Sucic, because Sucic is normally an absolute baller. Let's change his roles around, but Radilov is a deep line playmaker instead to give more support to the midfield. Push Scott further forward. And yeah, that will do for now, although Sucic is an attacking inside forward, not a supporting one. Um That will do for now. Let's let's play at a higher tempo as well, run at defence, be more direct in our play. And don't work the ball into the box. I'm, I'm trying to take that instruction off every now and then. Because sometimes you can be a bit too neat and intricate. So we'll put the press on now with 25 minutes to go. But just can't beat the big teams, man. We're just not there yet. Created nothing. No proper chances. And we're going to go out of the Carabao Cup with a whimper. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, it's it's the League Cup. It's, it's no longer a competition we care too much about. We've won it two of the past three years. But... I wanted a better performance at the very least. We just can't compete with the big six yet. I hate the Premier League. Seriously, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I'd rather face Barcelona in Tottenham Hotspur. There's something about the big six in the Premier League that it's just psychologically, it's a massive... Do you know what it reminds me of? I was listening to Peter Crouch talk on his podcast about how he used to prefer coming up against like a Paolo Maldini or a Sergio Ramos than he did against, you know, a, a, a Gary Cahill. You know, there's something about Premier League centre-halves. He felt as though they always had the better of him, and he preferred to test himself against Europe's elite. That's how I feel. I'd rather face your Atletico Madrid's than your, than your Spurs'. I just, I just can't stand this fucking league. Well, we've won it two of the past three years, so I'm not, I'm not disappointed, but it's just... I don't, I don't know how to beat the Big Six. I really don't. If you look at our record against the Big Six in meetings we've had, we are statistically worse in, in every single meeting against one of the Big Six teams. There's not a single one of the traditional Big Six where we have a better record than them. And like I said before, I know it's an RTG, I take the point. But every time, Spurs are the team we had the best record against, but we still um, got a worse record than they do. Every time we face... The, oh, Chelsea, okay, we've got a better record than Chelsea. But other than Chelsea, every other team um, have, got, have got a better record against us than we do against them. I don't know what it's going to take for this to flip, but it's... it's it's season, what is it now, season 7 or season 6? Season 7, I think. Something, something's got to change. You know, I take the point, we're a young team. I take the point, it's an RTG. It is going to take a while. But it's so demoralising, do you know what I mean? You go into one of those games, and actually, I said this in the last episode, didn't I? Like, if, you, if you beat, you know, a Chelsea, if you beat a Spurs, it feels like a miracle, do you know what I mean? It feels like a miraculous result. It doesn't feel Kazada. Mate, I'm pinning all my hopes on this one again, man, seriously. But it doesn't feel like, uh, you know, a Brighton beating a Liverpool or, you know, uh, an Aston Villa beating a Spurs. It feels like a, a championship team beating a Manchester City. That's what it feels like. If we beat a big six team, it feels like we've pulled off a, a miraculous underdog victory. There's just a, a level between us and them. And that's why I just can't see us getting into the top four. You know, I really can't. I, I, listen, I'd love to see it. I'd absolutely love to see us get in the top four. But we, we realistically, we only ever had one chance to do it. And that was two years ago when we were on the verge of finishing in fourth. If we would have won our final two games, we would have done it. And we ended up losing back to back to finish in seventh. So I think that, that was the window. We had one window and it slammed shut. And we, we were like a fly. You know when a fly is trying to get out of the window and it's just like constantly hitting its head against the windowsill and it's like bro just go up you know it's right there it's wide open and it just continuously misses the open gap that that was that that was us that season we had the chance the window was wide open and we absolutely blew it right following game Manchester United unbelievable in this save so I can't see getting a result here despite the fact we're back home for this one no we're at home for the Spurs game at home anyway uh, this will be our team now we're going to switch back to the 4-3-3 gig and press system so I'll be braver in this game and see how we get on and by the way I'm using Mazala I very rarely use a Mazala or a Carolary, but I've changed Scott to Mazala. He did quite well, to be fair, in those last few games. Anyway, this is our team. 4 3 3. Georgian Gar before a small guy, Mia Dragon, Scare, and Aris, but Tomine, Urusevich, and Scott through the middle. Kazada on the left, 
Kazada on the left, Suchi on the right, and Garang up top. On the bench, Ward, Gomez, Mitchell, Forge, Brad Oates, Trey Roy, Soria, Dalap, and Araujo as well. Second and final game, Manchester United at home. Like I said, if we get a, win, get a win from this game, it will be a miracle. Come on, you cherries. I understand that, you know, right now, even the top six place is still technically an overt achievement for this Bournemouth team. Really, we're a top ten side. You know, we're like a, a seventh, eighth, ninth team, really. Or tenth. But I feel as though we just have enough star quality to, to do it. We have enough quality to get us there. It's just these are the games. You know, we, we can beat your Leicesters. We can beat your Brentfords. But these games against the big six, they're the ones... They're the ones that stop us from making the jump to a certified, guaranteed European team year after year. Having said that, we have been for a few years now, to be fair. But even so, I want to be in a fucking Champions League at some point. Oh! Scott McTominay! What a goal! You know, that's one of those moments where you have to say to yourself, it's nothing to do with tactics, it's just a player getting sick of underperforming. Scott McTominay's first year, and it's a cracker! Well, maybe I should have been braver in the game against Spurs. As we take a shock lead against the Red Devils. That's the former Red Devil to go. Great ball by the scare out wide to Lucas Sujic down the right hand side here. And now Aaron's takes over. And there we go, mate. No finds Gazada this time. Now Smallcomb in space. Can he cross? He can. And Sujic has just over. Wow, this is this is impressive. But to be fair, we've only played nine minutes. So it's been a good start. But listen, there's a long, long way to go. And at some point, you expect the Red Devils to absolutely take this game by the scruff of its neck. As Anthony finds Julian Alvarez. That's an interesting one. Four-man City striker. And our Tealy Mans. Back to Timber. And that, that leveller is coming, believe me. Great start, but it's not going to be long for Man United back on level turns. Graven Birch, great free ball, and... Oh, Mascara off the line. Brilliant clearance. This is why I don't like playing a higher line against a big 16, because they have unbelievable creativity, fantastic pace, and a lethal finish on them as well. This is why I'd rather take my chances playing a low defensive line and just saying, shoot from range or try and carve us open, you know? But sometimes you just got to be brave out there. Put them under pressure with a high pressing game. Right now, so far so good. Alex Scott bends one just over. Still 1-0. Still 1-0. Doing okay out there though, to be fair. Breach once, but other than that, we're doing okay. Alvarez over the top. And this is what I mean. Rashford. Wow. Off the post. Second time in a row we've been let off the hook on a 1-on-1. -on Mama just really beaten both times. First saved by Mascara. Second time in the woodwork. You know what? Don't get complacent, lads. Don't get complacent. We're leading, but really, here, this this should be 2-1 Manchester United. We are very lucky to still be in front. You know, when we've got a elite back line, that's when I'll be totally comfortable playing a high line against a big six team. But until then, I always feel as though with the quality that these teams possess, we will get carved open too easily. And Georgie, as much as I like the kid, I say kid, he's in his late 20s now. As much as I like Georgie, he's not. Oh! He's not going to bail me out every single time. Anthony dispossessed. What a chance here. Manchester United down to 10 men. Do I make a tactical change? Or do I let the boys keep themselves in the same shape and setup? Scott. Over the top. And Suchic to Kowal. Off the post. Flag stayed down. Should have killed it. Right, I am going to make a tactical change, and I'm going to say to the boys here, play a much lower tempo. Time waste a little bit now as well. And I'm also going to ask them to play really wide, stretch Manchester United out as well. Slow the pace down, and um, let's trap them inside as well. Let's trap them inside, funnel them inwards, and uh, that will give us more advantageous chances on the break here with two high-energy midfielders in our trio. So, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, and as things stand, we're going to claim a massive scalp. It's yours, Mia Drag. Yours. Oh, poor header, mate. Poor header. And Urisavich. Oh, God. Right, this is why I never like a board midfielder on a booking, but I left him out. That was my fault. Uh, let's. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Let's go. Tell you what, let's go 4 4 1 1 and try and shut up shop now, shall we? Changing to narrow. And. Oh, now Alex Scott has gone. We have had so many injuries this year. It's unbelievable. Let's bring on Radilovic, the deep line playmaker. We're just totally shutting up shop here. And just saying to Manchester United, we're going to sit on this one goal lead. Uh, I'll have one more stoppage after this. So I think I'll make my two final subs after this one. 
with six minutes and just try and burn the clock. And we've got three subs. No, two subs left. Let's bring on uh, Tyrek for Gareth and Gomez for Mia Drag as well. And just burn the clock and try and see this out. Well, we had a golden chance to see it out. Had it not been for that second yellow card. But we're still in front as Aaron fires it way over. And we're so close to a massive scout. This would be a huge win here. Is that it? Is that it? It is indeed a massive win for Bournemouth. And what was I saying earlier? Oh, we can't play a high nine against the big boys. Get carved open. Yeah, we shut the door on them. I mean, I say that. We did see the ball at the post and a goal line clearance. But even so, massive scout there against the Red Devils. I feel we've got the worst record against them than anyone else in the say. Well, possibly Man City. But massive scout there. And that now moves us up into the top five. So not top four yet, but that's an absolutely massive scalp. And Scott found just a bruise for Alex Scott there as there was a which went down with the red card too. But that's a, that's a massive, massive victory there. And it cuts the gap on Aston Villa to two points. So halfway through the season. And so far, we're where we want to be. We're where we want to be. I said, I said I'd said, i love for us to be a Champions League team, finish in the top four, but fifth or sixth would still do me fine. Fifth would be a record high for Bournemouth. Our record high last year was sixth. Take it slow and steady. Take it natural progression. Sixth to fifth, and I'll take this coming in the season if we can hang on to it. 30, 34, 60, that would give us 68 points if we had the same amount of points, and that would be a fifth place finish. So, yeah, right now, oh, wow. Right now, I would, uh, I would take that. It, it may well be enough for the top four. It may well be enough for the Europa League. If it's the latter, so be it. I'll take it. But I will do this episode of the FM Save, guys. Big thank you for watching. Enjoyed it. If you had them, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next episode with games against. Uh, let's gather some pace and come back in January. Um, I might as well play all the league games. So the Europa League game games, I should say. Um, I tell you what I might do. If we get through the FA Cup third round against Sunderland, which we should do against Championship side, and we get a tasty fourth round tie, then I'll do that in the Watford game, so it'll come around here. If we get knocked out, or it's a, a banker in the fourth round, then I'll come out for Southampton and Nottingham Forest at the end of January, so we can see what's going to be going on in the transfer window. Either, so, either way, have a great day, guys. Much love to you all, and uh, I've got to be braver, haven't I? I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Save very soon. Come on, Doxy, believe in yourself, mate.